Good morning, it's Andy from PCR Global with a bit of a walk and talk this morning um, on risk as usual. ISO 31000 2018, we're going to talk about communication and consultation, which is clause two. A very important, underrated, undervalued, and as we talk through it, probably potentially what is already happening in your organisation. When we understand it from ISO 31000, it really does help us. So let's go. 31,000, communication and consultation. So the first thing I want to do when I, when I look at this clause in general is split down areas and sub areas to understand what it's telling us. And the first thing we're going to split down, so the two general areas is the purpose of communication and consultation and then the goal or the aim of communication and consultation. Once we know the purpose of it, then we know what we're doing. But once we know the aim or the goal of it, this for me is the most important element of, to understand because then it's all about getting the right people, talking to the right people, so we can get the right people evaluating the risk criteria and making decisions. So let's, let's do it. So the purpose. So the purpose of communication and consultation as per 31,000 is so that we can do three things. So the first area splits into three sort of sub areas. We can do three things we can get people to understand and realize what risk is or what what part of risk we're talking about so that's the first element first part of three of the first element really so people understand risk once they understand it we can move in, into the second area they then they're then going to understand the basis on which decisions are made when you understand why people are making decisions then you can appreciate it a little bit more it gets you more to think. If you're not involved, then ultimately that can lead to difficulties, can't you? And the third part of the first, the first element is then people understand why you're requiring them to do certain activities. So those three, those first three areas, the purpose is there to raise awareness and understanding of risk. The second, the second area is that people understand the basis on which decisions are being made, the reasons why decisions are being made. And then the third part is that people can um, understand and appreciate then why they're getting asked to do sort of certain activities. There's nothing worse than being getting told to do something and, and not, not realising why. So uh, the majority of the times when we're involved and we know why, then ultimately we will act, we get sort of inclusivity, we get involved in it, we get buy-in. So that's the first area. So just moving on slowly, the communication and consultation, they are two different aspects as well. So, so why are they different? Communication, 31,000 tells us, is about raising awareness and an understanding of risk, while consultation is about involvement of people. So you're involving people in, in risk management, you are gaining their views, you are gaining, gaining their knowledge, their appreciation, and you're getting feedback. So that's the key area there of the, of the difference between consultation and communication. They certainly, the consultation area certainly moves into the, the, the second element which we're gonna talk about, which is sort of the aims and the goals of communication and consultation. Remember this is as per 31,000, 2018, but ultimately that's why I'm talking about it because I really appreciate the standard. So the difference between communication and consultation one, which is communication, raises awareness of risk and understanding that it's there. So that could even be a poster, couldn't it? It could be a poster, it could be an email. And what about just 40, if, if you're talking about 45,000, it's just raising awareness of that. But consultation, that's, that's where we've got to start thinking this is about feedback. This is about gaining the understanding um, of the other people, to, which is going to build into the second element, which is the criteria and decision making. So communication and consultation. When they go hand in hand, we should then elicit um, what I like to think of as far to. Far to, far to, and then you, or you, far to, it's up to you. But that means any information you're going to get then is going to be factual, it's going to be accurate, it's going to be relevant, it's going to be timely, and it's going to elicit, elicit, elicit an understanding of risk. So far to, factual, accurate, realistic, timely, and then it's going to give us an understanding. So that's important to, to, to know that. So communication and consultation, they are different. So then moving on to the sort of the second element, which is the goals, the goals of risk management. Yeah, so this is, so we've covered the purpose and so now we can look at the goals of it as per 31,000, <coughs> excuse me. 
So the goal of it is to, it's to involve the right people at the right time at every stage of the risk management process. So the risk management process as per 31 is six steps, six phases. They're not, they're not step by step, they're iterative. But the goal is to bring in the right people, the right experts, the right subject matter experts in that area to comment on the certain that certain area. So whether it's scope, context, criteria, whether it's part of the risk assessment, whether it's recording and reporting, whichever area it is, that's important. So we've got internal and external stakeholders, whoever they may be, but involving the right people. Once we involve the right people, it's only then that we are going to be able to define the proper risk criteria for the risk assessment, and also then that which, which will then enable the correct people to evaluate risk. This is where it goes wrong, guys, when you see people's risk assessments and people aren't involved in it. Why aren't people involved? We need to involve strategic, tactical and operational level uh, people in most of the risk assessments that we do. Why do we need strategic level? That's all about the governance, isn't it? When we involve people, um, we then get buy-in. When we involve people, we get the right knowledge, the awareness from the different levels, and it, it gives us that sort of inclusivity. So that's really important, that's what does not happen. If you're watching this and you really are interested in risk, then think about this. When was the last time the strategic level, tactic level and operational level got involved in the risk management process. Maybe in your organisation it happens all the time. I don't see it happening all the time in most organisations. So that's it, we're nearly there. We're nearly there. Let's just sort of tailor that off, sort of, sort of close that loop on this. So clause 6.2, which is communication and consultation, it's got a purpose and it's also got some aims and goals. The purpose is, is three. It's three things for the purpose. It's raising that understanding and awareness of risk. It's allowing the relevant stakeholders to understand the decisions, uh, the reasons why decisions are being made and also to understand any activities or that we're going to require them to do because if we don't involve them, then don't explain to them, then ultimately that's going to pee people off as we know. They're going to get buy-in. And the goal of it was to ensure that the right people are involved at the right time for defining the risk criteria and then evaluating risk. Again, wrong people, evaluating risk, wrong result. If you don't involve top management in certain risks, wrong result. If you don't involve the operators, the people on the coal face, whether you've got a chisel or a chainsaw or a bloody uh, a fishing net, or you've got, or you've got, you've got a weapon on, on, you know, doing private security, you need to be involved. Your your information needs to be heard. So that's it. Clause six point two, because six is the uh, risk management process clause. Clause six point two: communication and consultation. Thanks for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy and stay productive.